Sarah, this is Heartcover Hearts, and this is a very belated week of reading wrap up. This is usually where I talk about the books that I read this last week, what I'm currently reading and then potentially could read. Uh, but you may have noticed that I haven't been around as much. I kind of filmed my best of and then haven't been back since. Uh, hopefully that tidied you over for a little bit. Uh, the reason I've been MIA is I think a good one. I was finishing up a role at my company and then preparing to start a new one. And during that time, I took a tiny wee little week off uh, to kind of let go of the old and uh, prepare for entering in the new. I've also, <laughs> I've also just been uh, completely inundated and overwhelmed at all of the things I need to learn for my new role at my, at my company. But let's talk about the books. Um, so uh, yeah, I have a big backlog of books that I wanna talk about. And I really missed this, this, po this portion uh, where I talk to you every week about what I read feels like um, a conversation. And I know I'm just looking at myself and saying that, but uh, your comments and the, the community that, that, uh, that I'm lucky enough to have plugged into here means a great, great deal to me. And so something was missing when I wasn't able to, to kind of carve out the time to sit down and talk about books. And it's not just about sitting down and talking, it's also the editing process. That takes a good amount of time because I say a lot of nonsense in these. <laughs> oh, so much nonsense. And uh, I don't wanna have you all have to listen to all of that. So there's an editing process, there's getting, there's uploading it, you know, all the technical stuff. Um, and so what, what happens on this side is only half of, of getting it to you. But I'm kind of interested in, in seeing how this actually works. So I've been on BookTube now for coming up on three years in April, and I've just learned, I've learned so much. Uh, you may notice that I don't do as many of the things that I used to. Uh, for example, I used to do a lot of tags. Uh, I used to do more chatty um, things. I tried a few vlogs a few times. Some of those I would love to do if I had more time, but. Uh, right now, I just, I don't. And uh, the time that I have, I wanna spend reading because that's, that's what fuels all of this. Uh, and I'm a fairly private person. Uh, you may have noticed that I don't do things like, you know, ask me anything or, um, or kind of share too much other than kind of where I'm located and um, obviously the books that I love and the tastes that I, that I have when it comes to reading and some experiences in my past. But uh, so vlogs don't, aren't always so good for me to do because I just feel like I'm exposing too much of, of, my, of myself and, and my day-to-day -day life. And also when I was thinking about doing things like that, it f felt for me like I like more performative than informative. Uh, and I, I just didn't, it didn't sit well with me. Uh, so I think the conversation or, you know, kind of the monologue and then you all respond in the comments and, and reach out to me on Voxer and we have those discussions, that's really what works best for me. But I would love to have a little bit more time to do more uh, chatty conversations about books. I would love to have more time to do tags because there's some amazing ones and I have some really great ideas for some tags, but I feel like it would be completely rude <laughs> for me to, to throw out a tag when I haven't been doing them in over a year. So, so won't be doing that because that is obnoxious. Um, but yeah, so that's so that's kind of state of where I am, where what's going on with the channel. Um, but let's get into the books because that's why we're both here. So let's talk about the first one. It's an English murder by Cyril Hare, and I I've seen this a bunch of different places. The there's just a new reissue of this, and it just looked fantastic. So. I remember I was this close to buying it on Blackwell's when I saw this brilliant little uh, add-on that you could put on from Amazon, which links to the public library system in your area. 
and you can kind of put in which libraries you're a member of and it'll tell you if it's in your library. So not only did it tell me that yes, it's in my library, it also told me that it's actually available in audio. So I would be ridiculous to buy it from, from the UK. Fair enough. Uh, so I was um, prevented or, or saved by my better uh, technology and ended up taking this in audio. This was an absolute delight. It's one of my, my favorite of the golden mystery genres uh, where you can pull politics and a little romance and and kind of contextualize with what's happening in the world at the time that this was written. Uh, this was written in 1951, and as I mentioned, it was reissued. And uh, we really have, this is one of those perfect Christmas time, uh, manor home uh, mysteries where a storm comes through and everyone's kind of locked in. Uh, I do love that setup very much, but this had something extra, and it was the introduction of race class politics uh, that uh, if you follow my channel, you know that I love. So we have Lord Warbeck and he is dying. He, this is probably his last holiday and he has called the family and friends uh, to come spend it with him, even though he's pretty much bedridden. But he wants some good memories and, and, um, and I think he's also trying to clear the air between some of the people and hoping that that happens in this, in this visit. Uh, at the same time, when it opens, we meet a historian that is there, and uh, Dr. Botwink is there to really assess the architecture of this of this uh, manor home and looking at it, its historical um, reference and aspect, and uh, doing some and 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 doing some really interesting findings and. Uh, Lord Warbeck is very happy with his work, invites him to stay longer through the holidays. This pre kind of presents like a, a kind of touchy situation with um, above the stairs, below the stairs, because he's kind of working for, does he, but he's, he's a historian, uh, very well known. So in some cases he does fit in dining with the family, but he's also, employed by them so maybe he should be below the stairs but he sh can't really dine with them below the stairs uh, and the biggest twist uh, the biggest aspect of this which is difficult for them to figure out how to navigate is that he's Jewish and Lord Warbeck's son who's coming his name is Robert has started a fascist league very similar to what I think Oswald Mosley did um, if you know your Midford history, uh, he started the British Fascist Union. Uh, this is a fascist league that is has been started up and and they're kind of pulling up all sorts of, of horrible actions and uh, and fomenting a lot of anti-Semitism. But Dr. B Botwink doesn't want to be rude. He wants to be kind. And so he is kind of forced into participating and uh, with this family and becoming a guest during the, during this time. Uh, we also have uh, coming Sir Julian, who's kind of head up really high up in politics. And he comes with a a gentleman who's his security because he's that important. And that adds some interesting uh, dynamics to, to fold as well. We have Mrs. Carstairs and she ha is kind of a formidable power broker, kind of behind the scenes or even sometimes up front in the scenes. And she's, she's there and uh, it, it has, her husband is not because he's away in f at foreign travel. Uh, but she's very close with the with uh, the Lord, so she's been invited. We also have Lady Camilla. Lady Camilla grew up with the family and had a relationship with Robert that she thought was going to become a, a marriage. And so there's some romantic scores to settle there as well. A murder happens. I won't tell you which uh, person was murdered, uh, but it creates some pandemonium in the home, obviously. All the elements that I really love in the golden age of mystery type books. Uh, and I think the audio was exceptionally well done. It, uh, it just kind of put you completely in the mood. So uh, if you like that kind of thing, you might also uh, really enjoy that book.
Then, uh, keeping on the March Mystery Madness train, I read Dead Dead Girls by Nikisa Afia. And this one I found in one of my local free libraries. Thank you very much, my neighborhood. Uh, this was fun. This is number one in a Harlem Renaissance mystery. Uh, and in this book, we are set in the 1920s in Harlem. Uh, so it's in a speakeasy and a jazz club. And we have Lovey. Uh, her name is Louise, uh, but everyone calls her Lovey. And she, uh, we open with a retrospective thing that happened in the past where she was the victim of a kidnapping and she actually using her brains and and really being sharp and smart and insightful and resourceful was able to free herself and uh, some other women that were held and so she is kind of in the neighborhood seen as this folk hero rightly so well, she uh, lives in a boarding home with her best friend slash girlfriend. They live in different rooms, but are in a rela secret relationship together. Several black girls show up dead and are have been murdered. And she gets kind of pulled in and told by the police that they want her help because she has access to spaces that they don't. And despite her better instincts, she decides that she does want to help because she wants to make sure that, that no, more, no more black women are, are killed. I think the ambiance was great. The uh, LGBTQ romance here was great. It, this was just such a really good start, really great uh, introduction to this. And I look forward to reading more in this series. And eh, great cover too. And then as one does, I was just randomly in the mood for some trollop. You know, sometimes I just want a comfort read, a comfort uh, or a comfort listen. I really enjoy uh, listening to Anthony Trollope's Palliser series. Uh, this is number two that I listen to, Phineas Finn. I find his women characters to be uh, quite interesting. I love how so many of them have no interest in marriage and um, and are very dis discerning uh, about what their future will will hold. I just love that. So this is, the, as I mentioned, the second in the Palliser series. And this is set in the 1860s. Uh, we have a young Irishman who has found his way into politics. He came to London ostensibly to to work in law, but found himself a seat in the House of Commons. It's an interesting time, uh, and I don't know very much about it, so I uh, love, love that intersection where I get to learn a little bit. Uh, it's the second reform bill is being introduced, and that is something that would introduce Irish tenants' rights. Uh, and it was highly controversial. Uh, we have the return of Lady Glencora, who uh, you know annoyed me before, in the, in the first Pallister series and annoys me even more now. She annoyed me before, but she goes extra in this one. Uh, there's a relationship that she starts to meddle in and tries to prevent, um, not only for personal gains and personal uh, reasons for her family, uh, but also uh, anti-Semitic reasons um, that really were, were I, I don't want to say shocking because it makes sense for her character. Um, and I, I'd be interested in knowing Trollope's history with anti-Semitism. I, I know that that was something that was really a problem during, that, during this time. And I, I think I've heard that he does have a lot of anti-Semitism in his books. Uh, I felt like this was specific to the character. Uh, in other words, it was kind of relegated there because the character that, that she is talking to, um, Madame Max, uh, was married to a banker. She's a foreigner in, who's independently wealthy and she is among the, the elite running around in London. And she has entree to a lot of society. It's, it ended up allowing it to be a very pointed um, conversation as opposed to uh, painting uh, this woman, Madame, Madame Max, as this uh, really uh, nefarious character. I think she was, she, her character was really, really interesting, very interesting. 
Uh, yeah, so I just, I loved it. I, I look forward to, to reading more of Anthony Trollope, um, specifically continuing with the third of the Palliser series. So that is where I'm going to leave it for right now and uh, come back and I'll tell you more of the books that I have read recently. Uh, so thank you so much for watching and I'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Bye.